Ah, uh, okay. You use a, a piece of wood that, I guess, you, you lay little strips of metal underneath and you make your connections that way. Okay, cool. Great, we know what a breadboard is. Everybody has a battery. Everybody has an LED, right? Cool. I think class is going to begin. First, I will give you guys assignment number one. So here we go. Here's your assignment number one. Nice, nice. <laughs> assignment number one is you need to become a firefly. There we go. You didn't make it to Panama. So, this is, this is actually a slightly more advanced firefly costume than what you guys will be making uh, at first. But this is going to be a good little introduction for you guys to the world of programming, very tiny little microcontrollers, soldering stuff together, and designing something with some sort of uh, non-verbal and non-digital interface. So we're using a mouth um, shunter in order to turn on the output, which is this flashing firefly light. This is actually modeled after a certain type of firefly that lives in Panama Headlight later, which I think I talked about a little bit, it's the brightest insect in the world. It has these two extra lights on that always stay on, and then it communicates with its abdomen like a normal firefly. You guys are basically going to be making this thing um, with a little mouthpiece um, for triggering when you want to do your flashing pattern. Um, and then uh, the bulb to flash the light, and then just the little body. So you don't have to worry about these two extra little side things. Um, but the assignment's basically going to be, and we'll go over that in just a second, a little tiny bit more detail, so it's not that complicated. Um, you're gonna be making one of these things, and then we're going to go outside and kind of have a little performance uh, where we, we play with these. Um, and try to communicate and basically end up playing a game of hide and go seek um, with the, the lights, which is kind of fun. Um, so, okay, before we do that though, we're going to pop the lights back on and we're going to have the first super basic electronics tutorial. Um, so, everybody has a light? Yes. And uh, we're going to figure this out. Maybe this example. Um, so a lot of people get worried about electricity, and the first thing to learn is like, you don't really have to worry about that much electricity. Um, especially like little batteries and stuff. They're not gonna hurt you that much. Um, car battery can send your fingers. Um, I uh, felt a little bit of a scar uh, from messing with the car battery over the summer. Um, it was literally like, a, oh, we're not having electricity, <laughs> and it like, like left this big, uh, nasty gas, but it cauterized, so it, it, it was weird. Um, anyway, these little batteries, anything, uh, most of these little things in the range of, this is a three volt battery. Um, who here studied like electricity? Ohm's law equals IR. We'll get into how electricity actually works later. Um, right now we're going to build your tacit knowledge of how electricity works. The very first lesson, you can choose to do this or not, is you get a very visceral understanding of electricity. Taste the battery. Go in your mouth. You can, yeah, you feel a little, it's just a little tingle, right? So the way a battery works, right, is you have a plus side. You see the big, the big plus? Um, and you have a minus side, the unlabeled part. So if you make a connection, these two are actually unconnected. If they're connected, then there's electricity that flows through it. Um, and that's what you're doing with your tongue. So right now, uh, you are uh, you're sending a very mild electric current uh, through your saliva, um, your skin, uh, your tongue is like reacting to it, uh, and then it's going into the negative terminal of that. Um, the result is you get some work done, uh, you know, like the physics term work, you know, energy 
is transferred to the immune system. Um, and what's happening is there's chemical changes that happen in your tongue, and you get a, a, a nervous impulse that lets you know things are happening. Um, so we can apply <laughs> this principle of my lung feels weird to many amazing things in life, such as I want to turn on a light. Um, so using the simple principle of I want to turn on a light, you can connect the two terminals of your battery to the light emitting diode. So now the electricity goes from the positive side up through the diode, makes the work happen. Photons are shooting out, blasting people in the face. And then it goes um, back to the other side, the negative side. And it's only when this electrical loop is closed that the work actually happens. Now, does anyone not work? Why is it that the electrical loop is closed? It's a perfect question. Why, if I go like this, nothing's happening? That's because an LED is a special electrical component called a light emitting, we know what that part means, right? Okay, that makes sense. Diode, who knows what a diode is? Is Yeah, it's a thing that has two sides to it. It has a positive side and it has a negative side. Um, what a diode does is it lets electricity only travel through one direction. So if you have a circuit that's very complicated and you want to make sure that um, electricity can only go through one way, and then if I drop a battery on this side, it won't send a bunch of current back the other way or something, you can basically put in a diode, which acts like a one-way valve for your electricity. So if you notice very closely, and you look at your LEDs, one of the legs is slightly longer than the other. Got that? So um, the long side is the positive side. So the big, tall leg is very positive. Um, the short, little leg is very grumpy because his brother, the big, tall leg, going and picking on him. Um, so he's very negative. So if we touch the positive, tall leg to the plus side of the battery and the negative leg to the negative side of the battery, it completes the circuit. And we have, basically, an LED throwy. Um, has anybody ever seen these? It's a type of graffiti that was invented about five or six years ago. People basically tie these LEDs to some of these watch batteries and then to a magnet, and they throw them up on buildings. They'll make handfuls of these, and they'll throw them up on buildings, and they have these buildings with these scattered lights all over them. It lasts for a couple days. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, some people have even made solar-powered LED throwies so that they actually recharge themselves and they can stay up there for years. Um, so it's kind of neat. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, just Google LED throwy. Uh, there's an instructable out there that uh, actually shows you how to do it. In New York, I've seen it. Um, I saw some guy throwing around Atlanta before. Um, it's pretty cool. But anyway, so it's amazing. Look what we did. We made our first circuit. This is so great. I'm so happy. Um, so, now that we have that out of the way, what if we could give this some sort of behavior? What, what kind of behavior would you like to see out of a light? Because right now, we don't have much of a behavior, it's just on, right? What's, what's something very simple? Um, blinking! Beautiful! So, we can use the affordances of digital media to program something to actually blink. It can tell it, be high voltage, be low voltage, be high voltage, be low voltage. And that's what's happening right here. So we have this um, battery right here. It's powering this tiny computer. And this tiny computer has a strip coming out of it that's hooked up to this LED. One side of the LED, the negative side, is going to the ground of the battery. But the other side is going to a pin on the LED or on the microcontroller itself. And we make a very simple program that just says, whenever I get something over here, um, whenever I send something up on this pin, then I want you to go to this pin right here, which I think is pin number zero, they call it. And I tell that pin, flash on for 250 milliseconds, flash off for 500 milliseconds, flash on for 100 milliseconds, flash off for 300 um, so you can actually program this little behavior right there. And so right now, that little flash right there, that is doing uh, 
a Jamaican fireflies uh, mating call of the male uh, chief. So you guys are actually going to have to do a tiny bit of research yourself. And part of your assignment is you're going to have to program two different uh, species of fireflies uh, mating calls. Uh, one from around here, because we're going to try to talk to our fireflies that actually live around here. And then one from somewhere else in the world. Uh, cool. So we all have this. Next step is let's program some Arduino. You got an Arduino? Bust it out. Plug it into a computer. I'm going to go quick. You don't got an Arduino? Be best friends with someone. Yeah, Larry, we're friends now. Oh, cool. Because Amazon. Now, did I say just friends? I said best friends. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, you're going to take your Arduino and you're going to turn on your computer, whatever computer you want to use. Actual form. It's true, but I don't know who else is cool with it. Another box? Yeah, I'll get you another box uh, after class. Thank you. Okay, so it's process. Cool. Yeah, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up the little Arduino program, right? Oh, the little thing that I downloaded. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that? Oh, we use, we use Labs. Don't let you guys be I was preferring to use whatever computer you want to use most often. Okay. Um, but if your personal computer does not have Arduino on it already, um, then do whatever's quicker. Quick All right. Well, soon we'll all be up to your amazing level. <laughs> oh, Manny! Oh! Walking is hard. Which is pretty much proxy. Cool. Hmm. That looks like. That was not the table I There you go. Okay. I'm like, this one. I'm going to get that table. Let me see the end. So this is, so you guys are going to be using lots of USB cables in your life. Um, this guy, big old blocky, I call him blocky because he's block shaped. He's also got a USB B, USB type B. Uh -huh. And that is the connection we're using here. There you go. Yeah, it looks like a standard. Nice. Now it looks like we got a mix of like some Mac, some PC. I'm like, I don't need a Mac people. That's cool. That's cool. PC guy, I'm gonna be your good teacher. Woo. Mac people, I'm gonna be your terrible teacher. Yeah. Uh, but it'll, it'll work out. Um, we'll all figure it out. So does everybody have the Arduino program? Oh, boom, get that guy open. Boom, Arduino. Yeah, open it up. So, first thing you might notice is Arduino. What does it look like? Processing. Processing, yeah. totally. That's, uh, it was on purpose. Um, they use a lot of processing. They communicate with the people who make processing. It also gets kind of annoying when you're switching between processing and Arduino a lot and you forget, you forget which window is which, but uh, it'll, it'll end up working. So, one of the cool things, just like processing, uh, your interface is very much the same. There's uh, a typing space where you type in magical codes, and then there's like a big play button, right? Um, there's also, if you go up to like the file menu, uh, up in the upper left-hand corner of, of the whole computer, there you go. Then uh, you can go to examples. They, these things come with a lot of handy examples um, that you may access all the time. We're going to go over to basics. Nice. And which one do you think we're going to choose? We're going to choose blink. 
Perfect. Okay. So, we have the blink sketch open. Um, you guys, who here has never programmed in processing? Anybody? Raise your hand. Cool. So you all understand the basic like parts of this. I have to like explain to the biologist like, okay, here's the part where you like set variable. Here's the setup part that's going to run once, and then there's the loop part that's going to run endlessly. This is exactly the same. So there's um, your setup. What happens with the setup is the way that your Arduino works is once it has power, be it from the USB giving it power, be it from an external battery giving it power, once it comes alive, um, it is going to run your program that you put onto it. Um, this program will run the setup how many times do you think? Once. Once, exactly. It's going to run it once at the exact moment that it starts up. It's going to climb up your setup. After that, it's never going to touch the setup again. It's just going to endlessly do the loop. Okay? So, who wants to? Uh, we need. People are all looking at their sketches right now. You see what they're doing? We're going to have one person be the programmer, and then we need a couple of you to be variables. So, stand up. <laughs> okay. What uh, what variables we got? Okay, uh, you're going to be LED equals 13, the variable. So your variable, so you put a little V, so we know that you're a variable. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you're like beautiful Larry. Uh, cool. Then we're going to have, uh, you're going to be our actual Arduino, like the physical body of it. Um, and then you are going to be our... Uh, LED, okay, and then LED stand right here, and then you can be the battery. Um, you're a variable. You're your buddies. Yeah, you're like the mind, and she's the body of the Arduino a little bit. You're a figment in her mind. Um, so you're the battery, okay, and what else do we need? What else do we need here? We have. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to say the Arduino, the actual processor itself, the person running through the code. So we need a command shouter. Who wants to do the command shouter? All right, command shouter. So you're going to sit here and you're going to shout commands at uh, what the people are doing. Um, so uh, you're going to have, do you have, happen to have one arm shorter than the other arm? Okay, cool. So the shorter arm is going to be our negative. negative side. Nice. And that's going to attach to the LED, right? Okay, nice. Way to switch arms. Okay, cool. So we have one side of the LED is going straight to the ground uh, of the battery. I'm sorry, what is she? I'm the LED. You're the LED. Um, uh -huh. Does anyone have a... Here we go. So you're the LED. Okay. That's how we know what she is. Um, she is the actual, like, Arduino's pin. She can either be high voltage or low voltage. Um, so show me a, a high voltage. Okay, you're very high. Great. Um, low voltage. Perfect. She's very low. So there's um, these, the Arduino, your little pins can uh, be set to a variety of levels if we do analog. So we can do an analog where she can be many different values up and down. Or she can be digital where she's either high, high or low. Okay? So everybody got that? Um, then there is, uh, uh, so the computer, um, the, the processor talking to variables and stuff, can tell these pins uh, what value to have. Um, if she is high, then she is going to be outputting uh, pretty much uh, five volts, um, uh, which is what these big Arduinos take in. This little Arduino is taking in actually three volts, so it would be high. Her high would be uh, three volts here. Um, so it depends on what your power is, but usually it's around three to five volts um, is what her being tall would be. Around zero volts is what her being low would be. Okay. 
And so um, let's pretend that this pin isn't even part of the Arduino anymore. She's just some sort of battery, other battery terminal or something. Um, if she is high and she's touching our LED on this side, uh, what's the LED going to do? Turn on, perfect. And then if we send her to low, what's it going to do? Oh, beautiful, perfect. Cool. So let's start up um, this whole thing, shall we? This is going to be fun. Okay. Okay. So from the very beginning, just shout uh, what's Whoa. the first line. Oh, the first line? Yeah. Uh, at that loop, it's high. No, no. Very first, the very first line okay. of the code. Is LED equals thirteen. Oh. Yeah. Thirteen. You're yeah. thirteen. Ooh. Number thirteen. Great. Right. That means that he is going to talk to pin thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Because if we set him to a different thing, he might be chatting with a different pin. Eric, you're pin twelve. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we don't chat. No, they're not. They're not chat. <laughs> <laughs> they had a falling out. <laughs> uh, but uh, so great. We initialize this variable. Now communicates with number thirteen. What's the next line? Okay. Perfect. Okay, so uh, you, I, I, miss, I misspoke when I said she was the whole Arduino. She is just a mere pin. I need you to come stand back here, Danielle, <laughs> and you are going to be the, the body of the Arduino. Um, cool. So what you're doing uh, is you're going to, uh, you're talking to, uh, Void setup, okay? So you just you just turned on and you're like, I need to run these next commands. What's my next command, Commander? Pin mode LED output. Okay. So you look, your pin mode says LED. What is LED? You talk to him. And you go, hey, pass this message along to which pin? Thirteen. Um, tell her that she's going to be outputting voltage. Got that? Tell her. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, Larry. Can we talk to, like, to 13? Okay. Hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to be high? Um, what is it? Right now, right now. She, she just lets her know because she can also take voltage in. She can be an input pin. Um, so you're just telling her, like, hey, I, I got a job for you lined up. The pay is good. You're going to be an outputter. So you're going to be you're going to be tossing electricity out the door. Okay? Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. This also, by default, um, uh, she's also going to tell her to be uh, digital uh, output. Yeah. Can you higher though? That's what you Yeah. Tell that to Larry. Oh, I tell that to Larry. Okay. Yeah, you're talking to your little variable okay. again. Okay, variable Larry, uh, tell pin 13 that you can only be higher level than you digital. You're going to be digital, so you can be higher level. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, what's our next thing, Commander? Okay, loop. Loop. Okay, you're jogging now, okay? I you're know. jogging, because now you're just running. Yeah, I'm going to okay, take it slowly now. <laughs> okay. So, what's our first command? Okay, digital right, LED high. Talk to Larry. Oh, hey, tell the LED to be high. Please. Okay, we need you to be high, LED. Boom! Oh, perfect! Okay, now. This is delay 1,000. So jog for 1,000 seconds. No, it's milliseconds. Yeah. Okay, so 1,000 milliseconds. Perfect, I think that was enough. What's the next thing? Okay, digital right LED low. Can you pin low? Yeah. We need you to be low now. That's amazing. Now what? We're not done yet. Delay 1,000. Okay. Okay. Cool. And now, just to show what would happen, what's the very next command that happens? Well, you go to the loop again. So you're still talking. What's the next thing? Digital right LED high. Go high. Go high. Perfect. Okay. Cool. We just programmed you guys to make this LED go. <laughs> now let's see if we can actually tell the Arduino to do this. Ready? Battle yeah. stations. Go, go, go. Yeah. First person to get the LED blinking, show me. Oh, gosh. Oh, I don't even. It's a trap. It's a trap. Okay. 
Okay, okay, you can hang along in the power. Okay, where's my, oh, my you other knee? Oh, oh, I don't know why you're so excited. Man. She wants to really bite her feet. So do I go? Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, there's my other knee. Okay. Oh, yeah, there you go. There we go. I got it blinking. Nice, did you actually program it? No. Aha. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so. So that's going to be the, the simplest, easiest way to get your LED to blink is to use the built-in blink program that's already running on your Arduino. Uh, but let's see if you can make it blink differently, Larry. Like, that'll be gone. So, you have your Arduino here. Right now, it's running some sort of, some sort of command that lives on top of this little chip right there. We are going to tell it to do our own whole program. Well, so what we do is first we're just going to try to press the big play button and let it up and This isn't Aha. Oh, right? So we ran into the first problem. Uh, it doesn't know where to talk to the uh, Arduino. Um, and so I need to choose where to actually talking to it. So there's a communication port. Um, that your, your computer has, so you talk to all kinds of different components. You can talk to the internet adapter, all kinds of that stuff. Um, we need to find the one that's currently using USB to talk to the uh, Arduino itself. Maybe it's that one. Let's find out. Uh, so it didn't give us any error. The next thing we'll look at is maybe it works, maybe it didn't. When you hit play or upload, you're going to see there's two pins on your Arduino that say TX and RX. That's like transfer and receiving data. If those flash, that means we're talking to it. So, while those are flashing, the whole program went through this cord, jumped on top of here, and now totally is programmed. Um, so now you can see there's a... I'm going to unplug it real quick. So for everybody to know, there is a TX and RX um, little LEDs built onto your Arduino Uno. Everybody, all right. There's a little, uh, there's two little LEDs that are glued onto your Arduino Uno that say TX and RX. Those are what let you know when there's data coming in and out of your Arduino. So whenever you're uploading your sketch, you'll see them flash. The next thing to know is that pin 13 has an LED built onto it already. So does everybody see that? It's the thing that's flashing already now that you've plugged it in. Where would TX and RX? Uh, they are right there. Yeah. So here's um, the upload button. Aha. So um, this just compiles your program to make sure you don't have any errors. And this actually lets you um, send it to the Arduino. So we have to choose the correct one of these things to talk to. I'm pretty sure it's this thing. Okay. Um, and I it's so now, to the PXRX, flash, 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 I'm getting all kinds of data. Um, now, uh, your sketch is on. And as you hacked it, you made it flow. So that doesn't mean not turning on at all. So you made it shut up. That was good. So now let's see. Um, oh, cool. We got different flashing patterns. Oh, people have pushed up their things. Yeah. I believe in you, Larry. Cool. So, Larry, huh? yeah. you have. Well, it wants you to do this. So. Or, you know, I can't use Siri. Unplug and replug. Yeah. Buy a new computer. <laughs> That's step five. Um, hmm. Try it out.
I need to be near an hour. Okay. It won't last very long. So now, Especially powering something else. Do you know? Ah. So, oh, hey, there you don't need mm -hmm. to uh, attach a battery yeah. here because this thing is. No, I think like that one really has a lot of So, what you do yeah. is instead you find the pin that you want to attach. Yeah, I'm not sure. There's actually a power stack. over there. And the positive end goes into pin 13. And then the negative end goes into brown. You see, it says GND. No. GND is the negative side. Mm -hmm. It won't be faster because oh. it has. Oh. Right. 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 Cool. Let's uh, see if you guys can get. Can you get both your LEDs going on the radio? I already tried this. Can you just pull out? So, question. Does your um, LED need a ground? So your LED needs to touch the positive side. So we are just touching a positive side. Nothing's going to happen. Um, so yeah, you need a ground in order to complete the circuit and to light up. Second question is if you can turn one of your pins into a ground. Um, in theory, you can. You can set one of your pins low while you set the other one high. Try yeah, it out. Like the the yeah. um, if you don't want to get it, uh, it push it. Okay. Uh, probably won't be able to get enough electricity. Okay, and you just hit run. Also, make sure that's so. going the correct yeah, way. So, pin H should be high. Yeah. 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 What is she doing? Um, so, what you need is the light. Yeah, the light. The delay. The jumper cable. The delay is like. Okay, so let's try uh, this. So, when I move the delay uh, uh, to high, that means it's going to be high. Yeah, how yeah. do you get that to work? You touch the arrow. Uh, yeah. Come on, computer. I believe in you. Yeah. It, it's limited to that. Perfect. Yeah. So you can have my, your my memory. Pilo. 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 Pilo the pylon. Yes. Like, additional pylons. Okay, so clearly oh, we're yeah, just doing yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think so. Clearly Maybe, we're How do we stop it from like running? User error. How do you stop it from running? Because uh, it doesn't like that either. You have like a... Let's pull this guy out. That guy's not supposed to be there. Um, oh! Get it running. You have one end plugged into... Oh, Larry, what did you do? I don't know. You had one end plugged into 12 and one end into 13. So it was interesting that it was running. Uh, but it may have been bad for you. So we're going to turn it off. We'll turn it off again. Okay. So does it well, show up yet? I, it was doing the default blink, but now. Um, so go to your device manager. We are the only Windows computers. Yeah. That's, a, that's a common. Device manager? Yeah. Open up your device manager and see if there's a, some sort of unlisted like, what's this thing? So if I want to make. Um, yeah, my computer is not as fast as that. Um, that's actually, that's going to be poor practice. I was just kind of telling them that's like a thing you can try out. That's actually not going to be good. Okay, no. If you want, um, so let's say now you want, so if you've made your LED blank, glom up with these two, and they are trying to see how to make more than one LED blank uh, different. Yeah, that's what I want. Perfect, yeah. Come over here. Sorry, you want me to bring my stuff? I'll leave it there. We're gonna, we're gonna all learn over. I'm just gonna look at everything. Hey, you know, I, 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 I did. I did. What did you do with it? I'll check it back. I'll look at all eight of them. Here it is. Oh, I'm it's here. fresh. She's one. Also a battery. Look at all my toys. Okay. So, you see, they're trying to do more than one um, LED. And there's a problem because they both need to go to ground, right? Right. Uh, and uh, uh, the problem is pin 13 is super convenient, right? Plug one in pin 13, one in ground. Uh, but if we have lots of LEDs, then uh, getting all those to stick into the one ground pin becomes more difficult. Hence, the reason that you guys all bought breadboards. Breadboards. So breadboards are super cool. The way that they work is 
They have lines that have wires underneath them all that connect all these little pins together in a certain way. So the first sets of lines that are connected to each other are, you see where it has this big red strip and this big blue strip? That means that if you plug a wire into any of these on the left side or any of these on the right side, the wires are gonna act like they're all connected to each other. So we wanna plug five different things into your one little ground pin that's on your Arduino. We can take a different wire, plug the ground pin into this blue strip, and then we can plug up to, I don't know, how many holes do you think are there? I'm gonna say 65. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just realized that number. Uh, and so we can plug in 64 other devices into that one ground pin and have all the electricity funneling back in there because that's what it has to go to at the end. Okay? So can you make them each blink differently? There, yes, exactly. But then you'll have to program it a little bit on there too, right? Uh, is it showing up in Device Manager? I do not believe so. So I get to play the... Not even in the other devices? Yeah, I get to play the... Why does my window not want to look at this? Anymore? You open up ports, com, and LPT? Yeah, it says, this says Arduino should be in uh -huh. It should be right oh, there. there. Yeah, that's it. So it should okay. be under COM5. And Close and restart your uh, Arduino. Yeah. And this one you can show the driver. It's probably got the right drivers. Yeah. Okay. Close your Arduino. He loves my shoes. That's okay. Oh, oh, chance. Okay. So yeah, let's just close this entirely. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. And then open it up again. Hey, buddy. My eyes. <laughs> Tools. Zero port. There it is. Com5. Beautiful. Is this my breadboard or is that your breadboard? I don't know. Uh, it's not my breadboard. It's mine. Blank. That brings us to our very next tutorial we're going to do. Yeah. Here we go. Boom. So you guys got the blank? Nice. Make it change that a little bit, and then upload something else. Yeah. Uh, and this one. See if it works. Runs. Oh, hey. So you made it different, right? <laughs> Perfect. You guys talked to your Arduino and made it do something. Right? Super great. Can't okay, put it in twelve. Excellent work, well, everybody. I don't understand. New activity. <laughs> so. Okay. Sorry. Uh, this is often how this class Brown? will function. I'm only going to give you the taste and get you hooked. Uh, so what we need to do next is everybody so grab the battle stations. When I say battle stations, I mean all of those uh, little tray things. Pull them out in the middle of the room and get them ready. We're going to do a couple different things. We're going to yeah, share them, grab them. Mostly just have them out and get them ready. Kind of get them in the middle of the class. We're going to do two things coming up. We're going to look through these, and we're going to find the awesome pens that we supply you guys with, which are in some and not others. And we're going to label all your cool new equipment that you have. And while we do that, we're going to... Where are the markers? Okay, one of these has a has a secret box of markers. So it's like an Easter egg. Ah, here we go. Markers. This. So everybody grab one of these cool things. We're going to have fun equipment to look at time and see all the cool, fun, weird equipment that we're supplying for you guys. Meanwhile, we're going to everybody grab a marker and you're gonna label stuff. You're gonna label it up. Okay. Let's bring let's bring this whole tray all the way down here. So you can leave your stuff there. The main thing is you want to write your name or at least your initials on stuff that you own, and you want to write LMC 
on stuff that LMC owns, so that we don't get our stuff all confused. Because there's going to be Arduinos flying, um, all kinds of stuff. But it'll be cool, and it'll be kind of a, a Zen-like practice. So we're just going to go through, and you're just going to find things, and you're going to be like, Mr. Andy, what is this amazing thing? And then we can chat about it a little bit, okay? Um, and so, but we'll only do, we'll go around the room, we'll have everyone while we're doing this, I'll pick on someone, I'll go, do you have a question about some sort of strange piece of hardware? Okay? Does everybody have a marker? Yeah. Can you open this? It's going to be on my case. I'm going to use this because this is point three instead of a giant marker. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to borrow this. I should have brought the point one one. That would have made me even happier. Minimal and not in the way. Yeah. Get that open because... Did you just twist it? Oh, you just twist it with the plastic um, on it. Yeah. Oh, Smart. Wow, that's the paint markers tend to work better on some materials. Sharpies will work better on other materials. Here's all my markers. She's really <laughs> long. She's just like <laughs> best shoes oh, ever. Why is she losing? And one of the first things you should mark I bet they is go up to each other's markers and write LMC on each other's markers. So you know where the markers she are. Really Here's a couple other shoes. markers. Skinny ones there. It's really weird. <laughs> Well, I'm glad she encountered cool. weird shoes today, because I would never have right expected that to be a thing either. Uh, don't write anything on the, on the light bulb, no. LED. <laughs> so, so mostly just the bigger equipment, that like terrible. this thing. I bet you can do better than that. Tiny right now. The other thing to look out for is if you get bonuses in your cabinet, like, oh, I have two light bulb things. Your task then is to go share your light bulb yeah. thing with another friend who may not have a light bulb thing. That's going to happen. You can do it. Just LMC. I have Just LMC. Better oh, handwriting. Look this. Literature, media, and communication. Like all these things? Dude, have a light bulb. Uh, no, that's fine. Like, oh, and basically, like the cheaper things I you see, know. Know. I'm sorry. Um, don't really bother about them. Cables are actually handy, uh, even though those are pretty cheap uh, to write stuff onto, so that's good because those disappear all the time. Uh, but, but like very small things, like little electronic leads, don't worry about it. Uh, those things, don't worry about it. Uh, mostly just big things like the actual paint, uh, little vice. Yeah, these are actual paint. And they work good on some surfaces, other surfaces they don't work good on. <laughs> I feel like it should be okay. <laughs> okay, not these, right? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Like disposable items, you don't need to label. Oh, yeah, if they're brand new, the way that you activate a paint pen is you hold it down on like a piece of paper or something, like this. And you just hold it there for a couple seconds. You kind of squish it up and down to get it flowing, um, and then eventually it'll get it'll get pumping. Nice. Some of these carts are way junky. Some are oh, here's more. Um, actually, y'all, Oh, perfect. And that'll bring something up. Does anybody know what these are? Oh, what is this amazing device? Um, oh, yeah. It doesn't shake anything. Does it control the thing? Yeah, it's a, it's a heat regulator or oh, a soldering iron. Ah, here's a soldering iron. Oh, soldering iron. So this thing, if you notice, when you're dealing with electronics, uh, you have your little LEDs, right? Sometimes you want to make your LED go to places that it can't reach on its own. So you need to give it a little voyage pass along. Oh man, I just started talking with weird metaphors. Um, sometimes you need to melt metal to other metal, right? <laughs> exactly. So if you want your wire to stick to another wire, we use this amazing melty metal called Daughter. This is going to be the other thing that we actually get up to today. Oh, um, we're going to try to do some beginning soldering today. Solder is a 
So if you guys ever go and talk to other electronics people, they're going to be like, when you watch them solder, they're just sitting there breathing in all this like nasty stuff and just hanging out with it, putting it in their mouth. They love it. So solder, even lead-free solder, still has lead in it. You guys think, is lead good or bad for you? I would assume it's bad. It's bad for you, yeah. So that's what these little fan things are for. These little fan things, um, you pop a filter in them, which we have some filters around somewhere, and they blow away the solder fumes while you're soldering, and they, they filter them up for you. So that uh, hopefully you guys go less crazy uh, and die less. Uh, but the main thing, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. The main thing about solder, and I'll reiterate this when we get to it, is that basically it's poison. Um, so don't put it in your mouth. I see people do this all the time. Don't uh, rub your hands all over it and then put your hands in your mouth. What's, what's one of the rules of, of the classroom? Don't put your hands in your mouth. Wash your hands. Don't yeah. put it in your mouth. <laughs> don't put it in your mouth. It, we already broke that rule the first exercise of <laughs> Well, put the battery in your mouth. Who here has never put a battery in their mouth before? Nice. Until today, yeah. Okay. Well, now you have this deep, intuitive understanding of what you're going to do. take for granted, right? Um, oh, of course, the people are always wearing blue. Everyone's wearing blue. It's be great. Cool. Yeah, it's a super fun project. Um, any other projects? Um, I like the piano staircase. Yeah, that one before about that. Oh, that is really cool. The piano staircase is cool. Next by, uh, I think it's Volkswagen. You're like, project. Yeah, I think you're also more smart. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like a cool one. I know, it's cool. Uh, no, it should open. For some reason, it's junky. And so, the drawer will only open when the other drawer is all the way closed. And that one will close it all the way. So Larry, you had a question. Uh, so, 
some item. It looks like a blue syringe. Blue syringe. Cool. Well, guys, we'll use this all later when you go through puberty. Um, it is an acne uh, zit popper. No, it is a solder sucker. Uh, so what you do is, let's say that I'm, I got my soldering iron. And I'm sitting around, I'm melting all this metal. And then I just melt this big puddle of metal. And now it's all over my electronics. It's making shorts. You guys know what shorts are? Yeah. Uh, let's demonstrate a short real quick. Who still has their LED and their battery on? Here we go. So we have the normal circuit, right? It was going like this. What happens if, pretend it's a big melty puddle of solder instead of a little stick of solder. What if I have this solder and it goes across these two leads and makes them touch each other before they go through the LED. What's going to happen? Short the circuit and so it doesn't make it. So what happens is, see if I can make a good enough connection. So now the electricity, where does the electricity want to go? Yeah, the electricity always wants to go the easiest place it can. And so it could go up and work inside the, the photon factory, up inside the LED and work hard hours. Or it can take a day off and just go through this little uh, piece of solder metal that we put on there. Um, so if we have all this solder spilling everywhere, um, it's a big messy goop or it's really hard, right? Um, so we use this thing called a solder sucker. You arm it, you press it in, now it's ready. You melt your big pile of goop and then you go, Larry. So these things need to be kind of 
kind of open like that for this. There we go. Beautiful. So Eric solved the problem of our weird thing. Uh, good job. Hot glue gun. Do you guys love hot glue guns? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Because they're the best. Yeah. Um, one thing that's nice about hot glue is it does the opposite of conducting. It insulates and it waterproofs. So let's say you have your whole circuit laid out here and you want to stop things like shorts from happening. Let's say you're in a solder fight and people are just throwing hot globs of solder across the room. And you're worried the solder might give them your little tiny pins and short them out. What you can do is you, preferably not directly onto your own chest, uh, <laughs> you would uh, cover everything in hot glue and it provides an insulating uh, force field that's kind of rubbery over uh, your sensitive electronics. And just stick stuff together. Okay. Oh, you guys will be in action that class. One of three. Cool. We have four more minutes of this, and then we're going to jump into assignment one, making some fireflies, getting you guys soldering. So, rapid label. Has everything been labeled? Cool. Do you have doubles of anything? Cool. That means somebody else probably has doubles of yours. Uh, Another tool, this thing. Anybody know what this is? Is that heat gun? Heat gun, there we go. This is this is a blow dryer from hell. Uh, <laughs> this thing, uh, it could dry your hair, but then set it on fire. Um, what it's used for is there's these heat shrink tubes. I think we have some of them. Nice. You see all these cool tubes here? Let's say you want it to be a little more elegant than Mr. Andy here. And instead of putting some just tape on your wires um, or covering yourself in hot glue, you can put wires um, inside these little tubes here. Can somebody find me a outlet? Cool. First tag. Somebody, you should all have extension cords in your boxes. Run a, uh, somebody has two extension cords in their box possibly. Uh, run power to your thing. You should also have a, like a third protector too, right? I have all of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't yeah, have any of these things. So you want to get power to your little boot. I thought you were already. Do it at party. Do it. I hear double dog. Triple dog. Boom. You have power over here? Double. Double Maddie. Come here, Maddie. Everybody. Okay. Here's the heat gun. Right? It's got two different heat modes. It's got off. Okay, maybe three heat modes. Off. Um, kind of hot, and then like mega freaking hot. Um, yeah, zero voltage. <laughs> well, I'm trying to switch already. Um, so you can make things heat up, and they will shrink. You see how it's shrinking? Yeah. It's like little shrinky things. Super cute. It's fun. They get kind of hard when you do that too. Um, but they're also they also stay flexible, which is kind of nice. Um, it can be kind of, maybe you have a bunch of wires and you're trying to put them all together. That's why these heat guns we bought for you, which are the super expensive, best heat guns ever. They do this. Oh, which is great. So then, usually you'll have things like, uh, you'll have your wires going into something, um, and you want to make sure that this connection where you solder them doesn't get shorted or things don't get onto it, or even it doesn't break, you want some extra protection there. Right now I'm just folding up this wire, just to, for example, this isn't what you would use this for ever. You would put your little heat tube in there. Anyone have scissors? I believe they should come with scissors. Or maybe just a Fine. Yeah, exactly nice. Nice. Yeah, sure exactly nice. Yeah, make sure you're back in there. Yeah, we get pliers. Oh, nice. Yeah, those would work too. 
on top of your cardboard. Cool. If you have one, keep it for yourself. So everybody should have one. Find a friend with a piece of cardboard. Cut out a little circle oval on your cardboard. I'm gonna run and grab you guys some scissors too. Be right back. No, of course not. <clears throat> shapes too. These are fine. Yeah. Uh, cool. So what you're going to do next is once you have your little surface, you're going to take your cradle. Everybody have a cradle? Eight pen dip socket. I think you might have taken your own. I may have. Yeah, I may have used my hand. Um, you're going to take it and you're going to flatten this little pin so it's like laying down. You're going to take that set it on top of your cardboard in like the middle wherever it's part's going to be and then you're going to take a pen and um marker oh, I have some pens I am trying to use things you need a ball marker too big there we go beautiful oh yeah that's great you're going to hold this there and you're going to kind of just mark all of its little legs. So just draw a line, like trace the top of its leg. So then I know exactly where those are going to be, right? Do you have a preference if they should be west and east or north and south? Uh, your your chip. The leg. Your chip should be. You'll notice your little uh, thing has a sock, has a little notch taken out of the top. There is a little notch. The notch is up, so make sure that it points upwards. Oh, okay. Exactly, so that's up. Roach is upgrade you to move the pen. Okay. And it's a little like, it's not already climbing, right? Uh, yeah, exactly, yep. That's the problem. Larry, here's yours. Thank you. So then once you have, whose cardboard did I steal? That's also mine. Oh, okay. Sorry, You're way ahead of the game, Larry. It's <laughs> great. Um, so once you have those all marked off, you can look at your little diagram here. And you're going to trace the diagram with your pen um, so that you know where things go. So Larry, I'm going to let you have that one. And I'm going to do an extra one along with you guys to show you. So what do we do once it's marked? That's what I'm getting to right now. So can I borrow your, your little socket real quick? So you have your cardboard, right? And you've gone and you've marked all of its little pins. Okay. 
So now you look at your schematic, your circuit diagram, and you just draw what you see. So I see that this pin right here, number three, I'm going to draw basically a line coming out and then going up. I see this pin over here, the very top pin, and I'm just going to draw a line going over here and then all the way down to the bottom. Then I need one more line at the ground, like that, and then I need one line coming out for the butt. Um, that just goes down like that. This, then you can label them if you want, but mouth. <laughs> Then we use this as a guideline for laying down the copper wire, the copper uh, tape. Got it? Mm -hmm. So the, there's two slots. Yeah. There's four slots that are not being used. There's one at the top left, and there's one in the kind of the next position, and there's two in the middle of it. Once you have your diagram drawn on your little thing, on your cardboard, we're going to pause there for today and start cleaning up and packing up your stuff. Uh, if you want, you can snip off a bit of this copper tape, um, bring it home with you if you want, and start laying down the copper tape, but that's not necessary because we're going to start doing that in class next week. The main things for you are going to be bring home your assignment read through all these little bits, okay? All these nice little, look, I made pictures for you guys, it's great. Um, and so read through that. I also have two assigned readings for you guys for Thursday. So all your homework is for Thursday, you don't have to worry about making anything. Um, your homework consists of reading through your assignment, one, reading a uh, short reading by Professor Murray, um, that's two, and reading a super fun reading uh, by Nico Tinbergen, uh, founder of Ethology. Do you guys remember what Ethology is? Uh, oh, beautiful, Danielle. Ethology is the study of animal behavior in their natural habitat. Um, so I have a reading for that. It's all posted on T-Square. Um, so that's what you need to do. The only other sub-assignment I have for you is as you walk around at night, try to see if you can see any fireflies. See if there's any cool places nearby that there's fireflies going. Okay? And if you, if you do, let us know. Um, we're going to look for a performance spot. Well, I won't need any. Uh, sure. <laughs> Don't do it alone at work. Well, I mean, like, are you going to be like right. in like Florida? Heck in no. like Antarctica? No. I'll be in Georgia. I'll okay. Be on campus. Okay. So we'll just try, to, just try to observe, see if anyone finds them nearby. But anyway, so has everybody got the main assignments? Yes. Read. Maybe we should journal this week? Yes. Oh, oh Larry, you're great. Yeah, so does everybody have their journal? Raise your hand if you don't have a journal yet. A dedicated journal. Oh, there's no hands up. That's great. Um, so, you should all be having, you should all be putting two uh, entries into your journal uh, each week, right? These can be reflections on things we did in class. It can be reflections on uh, stuff that you're having trouble with, stuff that you really like. It can be reflections on the readings. It can be reflections on things that you observe in the natural world. In general, try to make at least one of your journal entries per week about something that you see or witness outside. So try to like, so like with our mini assignment of see if you can see fireflies, um, that could be one of your journal entries for the week of just you walking around at night and seeing if you see fireflies or not, that kind of thing. 
remember, you can include drawings, sketches, uh, data. If you, if you're like, if you every five minutes you look up and count how many fireflies you see and make a little spreadsheet, whatever you want. Just, uh, just kind of fill out, you know, two pages. Got it? Okay, so are the, do we need to know the two reading assignments or do you post what they are? Uh, they're up on T-Square, they're in the resources, they're um, also on the most updated syllabus, but they are Murray and Tinbergen. I'll send an email out after this class reminding you of what the uh, actual assignments are, but those are the main things. pages to read in my follow-up email. Okay? Sound yeah. good? Uh-huh. Oh, wait. Uh, so I've been in a class, no, sorry, I'm not for like, I joined it a Friday night, right? Okay. And the professor didn't add me on T-Square until like 10 minutes ago. Okay. And we have a quiz on a textbook in about 20 minutes. And so remember, if anyone, in your class for 20 if anyone has questions, I don't have to email me up. Let me know. I don't think this is fair. <laughs> I don't think this is fair at all. I will actually go fight you over it. Larry, uh, I have a favor. No, no, you put the tape straight on. Can I keep so it in your box? Sure. You're actually on top, on a little pile of solder. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So my LED is using the back of the Make sure you have all of your components. You should have a cradle, right? You should have some cardboard. You should have things that you bought from me if you bought them from me. You should have negative ten dollars if you're new to, and Andy's telling to give you ten dollars. You should have a bonus fifty rolling around in your pocket if you're Danielle. Uh, and you should also have a battery and a light bulb, an LED. Okay. This is what this is where the box comes in handy, right? Because having all that stuff just rolling around in your backpack would make things difficult. All right. So. Cool. Did I tell you guys how much I appreciate you? Because you guys are a pretty awesome class so far. Uh, so I'm digging it. Thank you. Because they both got leather. No? I think that. I think that was it. This is very blowing to him. Oh, it's cardboard. Yeah, that was an example. Very upset. No, it's not. Very upset. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can decorate it and mod it out as much as you want. You can paint it. You can make it beautiful. Um, Thank you, Eric. Can you look? So I have a bag of all the uh, Firefly costumes that a bunch of my people in Panama made this summer, and I had to pack up. I like finished some of my experiments like two hours before the taxi drove me to the airport to come out of the U.S. And so I was just like getting together. I mean, you guys see how hard it is for me to get out of the classroom with all my random junk everywhere. Um, I had to like move from Panama. And I just tossed all the stuff in this garbage bag. So I'm at the airport and I toss it in security. Okay, and and the security it. guys like, mine, they like pull me aside. They make me go to this little like booth where I'm sitting there. And they're just like, sir, we have a bunch of, uh, I see a lot of batteries. I see a lot of wires. What's going on yeah. here? <laughs> oh my god. So here's the best defense. Brush up on all of your animal behavior literature. Because I'm like, oh, well, so the thing is, uh, it's a system, it's a suit to help emulate this firefly system. You see the male, Botinus pyralis, uh, firefly, and I just went off like this. And you see the guy, like, at first was, like, intrigued, and then just, like, uh, and then he's just, like, okay, okay, just go. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, have a great time. I'll see you on Thursday, and your minds will be full of Simon One, Murray, and Finbergen.
So it's, uh, uh, wait, how about you write? Yeah, like, what are the out of the textbook I don't own yet? Ooh, you need to go lay it? Right here. Oh, okay, cool. Perfect. You are set. Thank you. I, I figured it out. It's the shoes. I think it's the shoes, yeah. They're weird. The shoes. They look yeah. like the... Uh, oh, now she doesn't care. The entire class. Bye. Hey. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. See ya. See ya. Thanks for all your help today, Eric. Yeah. Uh-huh. 